What's up, everybody? This is Saber, and welcome back to Star Made Ship Reviews. This is the 21st episode after a long, long hiatus, not only from ship reviews, but also my channel. But I'm not here to talk about that. Today, we are going to be just reviewing some ships. So uh, if you guys haven't seen this show before, what I do is I will grab ships from the Star Made dock, or a lot of times I'll have them sent directly to me by their creators, and uh, I do a blind review of them. So I've never seen these ships before. Uh, I've never heard about these ships before. Um, a lot of times I don't even try and read up anything on these ships. I just try and go in completely blind. So it's just a review based on what you would be receiving as the end user if you were to go and just get that blueprint and then bring it into your game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so this is the Mercury Command Corvettes, and it was created by Jamster0000. So it does appear to be a... Uh, a decently sized little ship. I'm guessing it's probably mostly for roleplay purposes, although I don't really know. Got a nice shuttle there in the middle. And I have seen that logo in quite a few places on the dock, so I'm pretty sure Jamstar makes quite a few ships and uh, uploads those to the dock. If you guys look right here, I'll zoom in on this quick, this ship is equipped with USD docks, which, uh, or USD, sorry, USD I think is the thing. I think the term, the acronym stands for Universal Standard Docking. I think that's pretty much it. Um, so that's this kind of system down here at the bottom where you have one rail moving, or one rail pointing in towards the center, and then a docker pointing in towards the center as well. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. When I first heard about that idea, I was actually completely opposed to it because uh, I was thinking, well, why, you know, just have everybody do like one in the middle or like one in the middle on the top and then have it face up. Like, I thought it seemed silly to have both of those facing that same way, but then after actually kind of using it a little bit, I, I very quickly uh, realized that I was, in my opinion, at least very wrong in that it actually is a really, really useful system. So we actually implemented those onto our new spawn station, which we've been building. But uh, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this ship right here. I really do like its design. It does feel a little bit boxy in the back. Um, in the front it is as well, but I think honestly that kind of works because the whole ship is that way, so it isn't too bad because it all follows sort of the same general uh, body aesthetic, like it's all built around being sort of boxy. And it's not that bad, like I've seen some ships that are far, far worse. Got some decent detail work in there, both um, in general form, but then also in some of the uh, the details like the, the little coil looking things here with the ice crystal. Those are pretty nice. You've also got a little tiny little dish here, which I assume that probably spins given that it is docked to that. So I would be willing to bet that that actually does rotate around. So we're gonna go ahead and pull back a little bit here, take a look at this hangar that they've got with this uh, little shuttle. It looks like some pretty small cannons. I'm betting those are probably anti-missile turrets, or sorry, a anti-missile turret, uh, but that's just a guess. This is a, uh, this shuttle is fairly reminiscent to a Pelican from Halo. In fact, let me take a better look at it and see if maybe that's exactly what it's based off. Not quite, but it does really seem to be a lot like a Pelican from Halo. And that's fine, like it's a pretty, pretty tried and true design, which uh, works pretty well, I think. Anyway, let's check out these engines and then we'll go and take a look inside and see what all that logic is about, because there's a lot of logic I'm seeing in there. And uh, that's honestly one of the best parts now, after uh, all of our rails and logic updates, is that there's so many buttons that I get to push. Really great. This is kind of a nice classic engine design, actually, which seems weird to say in a uh, video game. But like, just using some basic, um, just ice crystal in here, and then uh, just doing some interesting shapes with it. Obviously using the, uh, the safety striping, just to kind of change it up a little bit. Makes it pretty nice. Uh, I would recommend uh, actually, let's look at this from the bottom first. So yeah, one thing that I would recommend is to actually fill in a, a little bit more back here. So let me get my cursor up here. So like if you were to end this, maybe more like where my green circle is going back and forth, then you could have some more room for systems, and it wouldn't seem like this is uh, so terribly long and fragile, because it feels like if one of those got hit, you know, it just kind of like pop off or break and then get twisted and jammed in there. So you could actually give yourself a lot more room for systems if you... Uh, kind of built that back wall forward a little more, or sorry, backwards a little more. Okay, and with all that said, let's go ahead and head inside and see what it's like on foot. 
Now, obviously, finding the door is not going to be an issue today because there is a nice, large, nice, large hangar door in here that, uh, that I can work with. I am curious, though, if there are, are actual doors on this because this uh, shuttle does kind of just hang out, so I'm not sure. Okay, there are doors, blast doors by the looks of it. But yeah, with this shuttle design, I would definitely recommend on, if this isn't custom uh, made for the ship, probably making a custom shuttle for this, because it is kind of strange having a shuttle that just hangs out of the, the side like that. Kind of inner ship remote, that's pretty nice. So I'm imagining this probably, and maybe that's why this is like this. I was gonna say, maybe it actually like, is supposed to rotate around. Let me see if I can find some gravity over here. There we go. Ah, here we go. Warning the dropship has an obsessive shuffle disorder. Okay. That sounds like kind of sucks. Uh, press this open hangar doors. Okay, so the blueprint was actually made with the shuttle in the deployed state, and I think it actually does. Yeah, okay, in launch position. Uh, let's see. So, how do I bring it back in? Let me read this. Who knew reading? Who <laughs> need to read in a game like this? Okay, undocking. Redocking. There we go. That's fine. So step one, press dock procedures to restore dock to docking only states, which is, um, which magical button is that one? Dock. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dock procedure. That is what I want. Press dock procedures. No, that's just the name. Can I activate this yet? Maybe that one's, I think that one's active. Uh, so two, many of the redock at the rail with two flashing green lights beside it. Okay, no, so I do need to switch something around. Oh, you got a missing, wait, did I remove that? No, okay, there is a missing block here in the hangar. Just keep that in mind. Um, I'm just, I should probably not just start pushing buttons, but I'm gonna start pushing buttons. <laughs> hey, it works. Check that out. Oh, see, okay, that's way, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> I ruined it. <laughs> Been at this ship for like five minutes and I'm already wrecking things. Um, uh, <laughs> what do I do? What does this button do? No, no, that's that's not it. Okay, hang on. Let me let me see if I can I can fix this. I can I can maybe fix this. Wait, no. What? Um. Have I made it worse? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, one thing I might recommend is uh, relabeling your buttons so you can uh, figure out what's going on with these a little more. You gotta get buttons all over the place. And uh, I know you have instructions, but then you get dolts like me who like to just push the buttons all willy-nilly like. All right, I'm gonna try and, hang on, let me get in this thing. No, 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 wait, dropship, no, be, be good. Behave, please. Please drop you. Okay, maybe that'll do it. No, that's, oh wait, no, I need this one. I need, uh, that's over the hanging doors. Uh, what's this do? Does that send it back out? I just want to send it back out. No, wait, no, hang on. <laughs> this is going to be the whole episode, guys. Just me running around hitting buttons and horribly ruining this thing. Yes, so please consider relabeling your buttons. That would be super duper great. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna undock it, and then I'll try and redock it and see if I can get that to work. Wait, where's the core? Core, core, core. Uh, do I have docked entities off? Is that why I'm not finding the? Oh, never mind. I just ran right past it. Derp. Okay, we're loose. Let me get turned around here. Oop, that's my camera. Whoops. Sorry, camera. Oh, oh wow, okay, so the dropship actually has a drop camera in it, that's awesome. Okay, Whew. drama is, I think, mostly avoided. Let me, uh... you know what, I'm just gonna leave this out. <laughs> I don't wanna... You guys can see what it, uh, what it can do, um, and what I didn't allow it to do. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a cool design to get that to work. Although, I would definitely recommend uh, saving your blueprint where it's in its stowed position. That way you don't get people doing exactly what I just did, because that was that was a mess. That was a that was a big time mess. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna hit gravity again. And then let's move on with the ship review. But yeah, also there's a block missing here, I think. 
I don't think I did that. So let me I'll just go in here. Core and bridge. Is there anything behind? No. There is some storage back there, though. That's kind of nice. Are these docked or not? I don't think they are. I think it's, yeah, that's actually a thing. Hang on, let me check. Oops, sorry, my nav filters quick. Okay, yeah, so I will be able to find uh, turrets and docked entities. I got some rails up there too. Nice. Yeah, overall, a really nice hangar design. The back wall is a little plain, but yeah, I would just recommend uh, starting it in the stowed position and uh, going from there. The uh, I think you could use something in here. Actually, okay, so you used... I would recommend using a different color for your, your ceiling and your floor, like just these flat panels, just to give it a little variance in here because it, it feels pretty, pretty enclosed. Also, I have no idea what this is, but I kind of want to find out. Uh, the, it's a thing, I guess, that I don't know. <laughs> All right. Is that, oh, is that an old school? Oh, it's an old school gravity elevator. Okay. I say old school, but it's been like, what, a couple months since this was the standard thing? Now I'm like, rails, rails everywhere. War room. Uh, yes, please. Oh, this is nice. This is that room towards the back. Oh, you got like a little map kind of thing going on here. That's sweet. I've got a bunch of signs. Wait, what? Uh, okay, <laughs> so we have a computer here. Trident Territories. No, this is really cool. ED is online. Plasmatic Coffee admits he does not like coffee. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I like this. This is a nice war room. It feels a little, I don't know, when you're back here, like it's kind of like enclosed. I, I don't know. I, I, it is a fairly small ship, so I shouldn't really say that too much, but I, I don't know how many people would feel claustrophobic about it. Um... I'd also recommend recommend making those glass maybe, just because like getting that hard edge is I don't know it kind of kind of sucks to have that kind of thing. And I understand like there isn't really any way, way to work with that other than just making it all part of the window. All right, then we got the captain's chair here, and uh, yeah, it looks good. Looks good. Nothing really up here. Just a just a chair, just a chair to hang out and look at stuff. And now finally, with some uh, some of the recent updates that we had. You won't die if you're in here unless things actually break through the glass. So that is super mega nice. Really looking forward to having more people on ships. It's going to be awesome. All right, anyway, let's go back down to whatever was down. Crew bunks and airlocks. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, see, this is a, this is a nice work here. Like, it's a little cluttered with the computer panels on the floor. But like just the, the the piping and stuff, that's great. Uh, I just recommend changing that to some sort of like hull block or something like that. Um, otherwise, though, it, it is a nice change compared to the uh, the first hallway that we came in. Ooh, nice little med bay. Ah, yeah, got the classic uh, classic. I, I don't. I need to not say classic too much. It's been so long since I've done reviews. Pretty much everything is classic at this point. I mean, I've been building some, but uh, yeah, definitely have not been doing reviews that much since then. Oh, that is nice. I have not seen anybody do this in a uh, med bay yet. This is great. Got a little like blood bank here. Nine liters, 5.2 liters. This is really, really cool. I had not even thought of that. Sweet. Very clever design. Uh, one thing I would recommend if you're going to have a bed like this, though, uh, where you actually lay down, is make sure you have normal gravity somewhere in the room. Because otherwise, when you get out, like right now, I'm just floating around. So you got to make sure that uh, they can get out of bed and then walk around as well. Okay, so we're going to go to... Okay, that's the just the airlocks. All right, storage gunnery access. Down. Um, so where's down? Uh, okay, that was the med bay. What's this going to be? Probably the bunks, I think. Yeah, okay, here's the bunks. No, wait. It's like a bunk. All right, so maybe like captain's quarters? I don't know. Ooh, ooh, what am I, why am I not moving? Um, what? <laughs> I have no idea why I'm not moving right now. I just stopped all of a sudden. This is very strange. Oh, wait, okay, there we go. That was, that was really weird. I don't, maybe my computer froze up or something? I don't know. That was very, very strange. Okay, uh, we're going to go this way. Okay, good. That's not out to space. This is out to space, space though. You might want to uh, 
change lighting. I don't know. That's not too bad, I guess. As long as you know where it's at. Because, like, obviously you're not going to get sucked into space with how the game works right now. But it might be added eventually. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> you want to make sure that you can really tell which door you're opening is going to be opening into space. Uh, having glass actually works with that. The glass doors. Those are pretty nice. Uh, storage gunner. Oh, this is the... Oh, nice. Oh, I love this room. This room is awesome. Very nice. I like it very much. Because it just really feels like it's just a service tunnel. Just like you're crawling through here getting basic stuff. Very sweet. Nice job, Jamster. Okay, so let's head up to the core and we will try and fly this thing around. See how it handles. Ooh, nice. I love it when people have different cameras than just the front. Makes it very, very nice. Uh, a lot more visually interesting, especially when they're off to the side like this. Okay, so I'm just going to fly around a bit. The maneuverability on it doesn't seem too bad. Turning rate is all right. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's pretty sweet. Lots of stuff in here. So we got the hangar doors. Let's go ahead and close those. Oh, nice, nice. I like it. So it isn't just... Are those animated? No, they're just... Wait, oh, wait, maybe? Okay, no, they aren't. Still, though, a really nice design. I like that. Seems that your doors are damaged. I don't know if you did that or if that was from uh, when they were updated. Okay, so we got that. What's this one? Dock procedure. Yeah, because that's, that's what I clearly feel that earlier. Okay, so we got cans, missiles, uh, two docks here, a jump drive. I think that's the, all of it. Yes, it is. So we're going to go ahead and go to the front camera here. And we're going to see what these weapons can do. So again, the, uh, basically, the, uh, the targets that I have here are, uh, there's three penetration targets, three shield targets. The uh, penetration tar targets are basically just what I use as ballistics gel, which is just water. Um, so I just test that to see how far a, sh a shot will actually penetrate into a really basic block like water. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be covering a, uh, a ship with water to try and defend it, but it's just a good baseline that I can use. Also, these shields, or sorry, these shield targets now have 200,000 shields. So it gives me kind of a baseline to use with both small and large ships and uh, sort of lets me know how strong a, uh, a ship's weapons actually are. So first, we're going to test, test out the cannons in the penetration target. Now, I have no idea where these are going to come from. I assume from the front, but sometimes I get surprised. So anyway, I just do one shot with those just to see what their penetration is. Also, I'm going to move forward a little bit. Okay, so one shot with the cannon is about mm, seven blocks of penetration, something like that. So not too bad. And then we're going to do the missile. I th yes, the missile. Whew, not bad, not bad. That is about ten blocks of penetration. Got a nice little crater there. And then some salvage beams too. Which, obviously, the other thing is an overheating, so I can't really test that. Although, I should probably get some asteroids over here too. Okay, so now it's time to test how quickly this thing will take down 200,000 shields. So let's go ahead and fire the cannons and see how those do. Okay, not the strongest in the world, but it's taken it down decently enough. Let's go ahead and test the missile instead, see how that does. Get a nice lock on here. All right, that, that was a pretty good size of, uh, size of the shields. So those two coupled together would do a decent job of take down, taking down this many shields. Um, you'd have to be careful with it if you're actually dogfighting, but you do have enough maneuverability that you could probably get by with it without too much of a too much a hassle or taking too much damage yourself. This has been the Mercury Command Corvette, which has a much longer complicated name as just the blueprint, but I figured I would just go with the basic name for it. And it was created by Jamster. So really nice build. 
Um, there are a few little polishing things you can do with it, but overall I think it is really good. So definitely keep up the good work and let's go ahead and move on to the next ship. All right, the next ship of the day is going to be the SB Rat Mark I, and this was created by Schnellbeer. Now, if you're looking at the points right there, you can tell that it is highly, highly offensive. It has uh, just shy of five and a half million points in the offensive category, and then everything else is pretty minimal. So let's go ahead and spawn this in and see what this thing is like. All right, so here we have the SB Rat Mark I, and already I'm loving the engine style although I am always fond of using lava as engines. They also got some nice little like vent type engines in the back too. Those are pretty sweet. Uh, Stilbier here has done a really great job of doing a lot with a little as far as his materials go. So he's using, by the looks of it, uh, a lot of standard, well, mostly just standard and advanced armor of both gray and black. But by using them in pretty interesting ways, he's able to get some pretty sweet detailing down here. Now, I'm curious what the heck this thing is, because this, this front part almost seems just tacked on, but I guess it's just the docking port with some cannons in it. Also, a mount for a turret underneath, which by the size of it looks like an AMS turret. Uh, also using standard docking, so really, really cool to see that uh, become fairly common. Really nice job on the windows here. Like, this is a nice little detail, because something like this is usually done... Um, like I think even way back to like medieval castles used to do this where if you had to shoot out a window now obviously you're not shooting out a window for this but it just kind of shows the the amount of armor that's there like it's it's a more structurally sound way to do windows if you armor them kind of like that I, I don't know all the physics or the the logic behind it but like that's just that's something that's been carried throughout history through uh, a lot of different types of armor and um, assaults designs which obviously from all the, uh, the offensive points that we saw that this thing has Clearly, this is a very, very offensive build. Now, I'm going to look a little bit later to see if these are actually turrets on the end or if they are, um, if they are in fact, just part of the ship. But right now, I'm just doing general aesthetics on the exterior. By the way, Schnellbier, I think you may have a couple of extra blocks placed here on the outside. Unless those are supposed to be like little bots or something like that, like little R2-D2s. You get know, one here on each side. I'm assuming it's not also on the bottom, although I will check. You also have an exposed uh, effect module here, but that's not a huge thing. It's not a make or break thing. It's just, I like to point them out so people can see them and fix them. Uh, just so, you know, you get another set of eyes on it. I really do like the style though. Again, the, the only thing that I really have to comment on as far as like a negative thing is it just feels kind of weird having this front bit on there. It, just, it really does feel kind of tagged on. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be other than just an extension of the ship. I don't know, it's hard to say. But getting a, a, a very organic, curvy form like this to work well is very difficult in a block-based game, so I can't exactly fault you on that. I'm just, you know, throwing up my two cents, pretty much. Uh, looks like under here, there might be... Okay, just additional engines. I wasn't sure if those were engines or a hangar, but yeah, got uh, two more engines at the bottom, which is really nice to see, because like a lot of people just think to do engines on the back. They're just like, oh yeah, I'll just put them on the back and then it's good. But it, you know, it makes sense to have them also in the front depending on the shape of your ship. So it's really nice to see people do that as well. Anyway, I think it's just about time that we go ahead and head inside and see what this thing is like in there. But first, I need to make sure, I need to check and see, those are indeed turrets. Holy crap, those things are probably pretty nuts then. Uh, now, a lot of people do ask me to do reviews on turrets for ships. Honestly, it's it's kind of just a big hassle to try and get everything set up right, because like you have to set uh, set things to enemies and like all the, or spawn enemies and all that kind of stuff. And I just try and keep reviews pretty short, and I mostly focus on the aesthetics anyway. So let's just assume that by the size of these and with what appears to be just one output, let's just assume that these are ridiculous. And with that, now we will head inside. There are a few USDs up front. We will go through those and uh, check out what he has on the interior. All right, so we are gonna go straight in the front. And you know, I got to thinking actually, um, this would be a pretty cool little RAM thing to have on here. If, uh, cause then if you docked to something else, then basically you could just sort of RAM up to him, dock and then board quickly. 
And so I'm wondering if that is actually in fact what its purpose is, because that would actually make a lot more sense as to why it's shaped the way it is. Oh no, that was my bad. <laughs> oh crap. Wait, <laughs> camera. Now normally I wouldn't be worried about this, but uh, I do have Newtonian physics on my single player. So I want to make sure that this isn't going to drift off like it did last time when I bump, uh, bumped it with that little pelican type shuttle thing. That was kind of a pain and I would prefer not to do that again. So it looks like this is moving at about a meter a second. So it should stop eventually, but right now I'm just going to kind of float it with it. All right, so there we go. We got that and get the gravity on this side this time. All right, let's head in. I can already tell you've done a great job with the halls. Got a lot of computers in here on the walls. Really nice design. Again, keeping a fairly basic palette, but doing a lot with it. Uh, you know, using mostly standard armor for the for the walls, but then also using some advanced for detailing along with thrusters. Uh, using system blocks very well for your details because then that just lets you get more done. And are these little crab pods? These look like they're little crab pods, which is awesome. I like that. Whatever they're supposed to be, nothing on the side, so I'm not positive if they are supposed to be cryopods, but it looks like it. Shield system, power systems, very cool. So these are the side docks that we saw earlier outside as well. And this is the kind of detailing I was talking about before. Um, if you're going to have a, uh, a docking door, it's really nice to have stuff like this so that you know that is space. Like, don't go out there unless you want to go outside. So let's go ahead and head up to the top and see what we got here really visible interior too like you have you use a lot of trans transparent blocks which is really good uh, if you have borders or if you just want to see what's going on in the ship makes it really nice got some jammers in here very cool oh these are to your uh to your turrets wait are we already that far back in the ship oh wait, no, no no never mind these are secondary turrets these are the smaller ones up front so you've got quick access to those which is nice so this would actually be a really good ship for a crew i think because you know you could have all your buddies and uh, hang out in the ship. And if you come into combat, then you can all jump into turrets and uh, fire away. All right, and there's nice uh, monitors here all over the place. What is this magical button? Hmm, I'm pressing it. <laughs> now the question is, what did I do? Because <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, what are these doors? These doors are little service tunnels. Awesome. I love this Schnellmere. This is great. Oh, okay. A little access to your logic. That is fantastic. Uh, I wish more people would do that because it's so easy to not think of it and then just hide your, your logic in your ship. But then uh, if you ever need to service it, it's a lot harder to find it again. So I don't know what I just did, but I'm going to leave that light green, assuming that's a good thing. So here we go. Is there a dock in the... This is strange. It seems like an airlock, but I'm not sure. Oh, that's why, because it is an airlock. Oh no, we're gonna hit stuff, or have we already? Oh yeah, we're already hitting the target. Whoops. Eh, it'll be fine. We're in space. Doesn't matter. What's it gonna do? Go into the sun? I don't think so, because the sun's a long ways off. Okay, so there's gotta be more. Oh yeah, there is a little bit more up here. Okay. I was gonna say, I wouldn't think it'd be over yet. Ooh, nice use of space here, because like it's it is a little dark here, so it's hard to see these, but it, this is really nice to have this kind of an area. Got a little chair, some beds. Really great interior work. Absolutely love what you done with it. Another thing, and maybe this is actually why you did it, uh, in order to keep his armor thickness, or his armor as thick as it is, uh, but then still be able to see really well, he did those wedges, so that way you can actually look you know, up and, up and down and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably actually more of the logic as to why he did it. But again, that kind of goes back to like even medieval castles. A lot of times you would do that so you could look farther left and right out of a, uh, oh gosh, what do they call it? Portcullis? No, that's on ships. Uh, yeah, you guys know what I mean? Like the window, little window slats where they would like basically aim out with a bow so you can actually see a, a wider field of view. Really nice kind of lounge area here. Using brown to denote your chairs. That's pretty nice. Although this, these also might be chairs. I'm not sure. Yeah, really, really great interior work done. A really clean style, too. You don't worry too much about... Uh, I wonder if this is supposed to be... I don't know what this is supposed to be, actually. 
have no idea. Just a pipe, I think. Um, you do you do a really good job of using fairly basic blocks. Like a lot of people are afraid to use too much um, just standard armor because it feels really flat. And for the most part, I would say that's true. Except for you do a really good job of balancing uh, your different materials, like your advanced armors and you know little computers and stuff. This room is a little on the plain side, but it's really not that bad. Like you would just need some detail, like maybe in the ceiling, and then that would cover it. Okay, so let's uh, head on up to the front, to the bridge, I should say. This is a very nice looking bridge from what I can see. Ooh, buttons. I love buttons. I have no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> but buttons nevertheless. Uh, ooh, yes, very nice. I love this chair design because you got your little joysticks here to fly it with and uh, yeah, take off. Sweet, so I think that's pretty much everything in the thing, in the build. So let's go ahead and head to the core and try this sucker out. I have a feeling that this is going to destroy the targets. Check your cameras here. We got side facing cameras. Those are nice. So I'm wondering if maybe the, let me check build mode here quick. Find the bridge. Here we go. I'm wondering if maybe these buttons are for side facing weapons. Wait, hang on, did that just... Oh my gosh, this thing can land on planets. Oh, I was not expecting that. I really genuinely was not. So I'm betting that is this button by the core. No, no it's not. Okay, I don't know what the green and red light button is. I have no idea. These turrets are awesome, by the way. Especially because of uh, the recent uh, emissive maps that we've added to our textures, which Kupu is awesome for. Because that just makes them all glowy and awesome. I don't know what this is, but we're just going to leave that as it is. Okay, so I hit each of these buttons, but then I hit one again. I don't know, is it this one maybe? Yes, it is. Okay, that's just the rotating the, the engines. Or the engines and weapons. I'm pretty sure there's weapons in there too. Uh, all right, and then this one's gonna be landing gear, I bet. No. Oh, it's a half tilt. Oh, this is so cool. Very nice. I love this thing. It's so, so cool. So that keeps it at that angle. So that's that. This is gonna be vertical, I bet. Yes. This is really neat. Nice job, Schnellbeer. This is really cool. I love this thing. All right, let's go back to flight mode. Um, I also need to, I just love that like these ones tilt too. I don't know if the back ones do. I kind of doubt it because like these are, they're not docked. So that's fine. Obviously that's not necessary. Uh, how do I bring this ramp up? Oh, I bet that's the, uh, I bet that's this button. Cause that's why it's, yep, that's it. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Really, really nice use of rails and logic. Because it isn't overpowering. It's not like this stuff is completely unnecessary. It's stuff that makes sense, you know? Okay, but anyway, let us go here. Check out your cameras. So you have a right and left face, then a bridge, and then basically just back to the front and then the core. So we're gonna go to the bridge view here. Get a little distance from these targets. Oh my goodness, there is so many. Mode one, two, three. Rear entrance. Okay, so these all have remotes too. So basically what I was just doing is already all here in the ship. Like this. Yeah, okay. Still though, really awesome. Alright, send it back to mode one, and then rear entrance is that is a fast rear entrance. <laughs> Good grief. Alright, then you got all your docks on the second bar. Really cool. Got your scanner here, ion effect. Nice. I kind of wish we had a uh, a visual effect for the ion effect. Like maybe it like constantly showed your shields a little bit. That'd be cool. Jump drive heat seekers. I bet those are the uh, the things in the side here. So oh my gosh, I sent everything flying. <laughs> oh no no, just the two. Okay. Well anyway, that's that's the thing's target anyway. So we'll do that. All right. So let me get. Uh, okay, I want to get a better shot actually. And we're gonna try this heat seeker button which is too good to pass up let's try that yes it is absolutely the engine pods and now i'm screwing up all my turrets new no. <laughs> or not my turrets my targets oh gosh 
these things are so so much cooler now that they actually arc around uh, in a much longer arc really really awesome I don't I hope I didn't murder that thing that shield target for the third one I'm not that worried about the penetration target oh no my, my camera no <laughs> my steady cam all right well anyway let's go back to the bridge view up here and let's try out the cannon Real quick, gonna try and get a straight on shot of this. And we'll try this, and then we'll go to the shield target. Alright, so one quick click. And right there in the middle. Uh, looks like it's gonna be, again, about seven blocks of penetration. Maybe eight. So that's just a basic cannon, and like, that's pretty standard at this point. Like, not a lot of people do layering of uh, weapon systems anymore to get that higher penetration. All right, now we're going to try the missile, see how that works. That is a pretty good missile. Whoo! <laughs> that was not even the entire blast, and it's still, like, what, 20? Yeah, 20 blocks deep. That is pretty awesome. All right, now let's try out the cannon on the shield target, see how that does. Now, obviously, it doesn't actually matter where I shoot it. Uh, if I was worried about armor or breaking through armor, then I would. But yeah, that's uh, that's got a pretty good, pretty good effect there. It looks like it's a, an ion effect, maybe. Wait, is it right? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, yeah, it's taking those down pretty quick, way faster than the last one. But we're gonna go ahead. Well, actually, you know what? Let's take down the shield all the way. Boom! Shields are down. Now let's do the missile and see how well that works. Oh, <laughs> yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I would say so. All right. Pretty freaking good. Do I already have one of these loaded up? No, I don't. Okay, hang on. All right, so yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I need to try out. Jump drive is pretty quick at charging. Not too bad. It's not super fast, but it doesn't need to be because it can take some hits. But yeah, really, really like this ship. Uh, I think this would be a great, great ship for um, RP or just actually hanging out with your friends in game uh, and doing some combat and stuff. That's the thing about RP is like it's not necessarily just role play in the game. Like you are actually going to be fighting people and stuff. So it's basically just multi crew kind of things. It's not you know relegated to pretending. It's uh, it's the whole package pretty much. So anyway, yeah, really, really love the SB Rat Mark I. Interesting name as it is. Uh, great job, Schnellbeer, and we will go ahead and check out the final ship of the day. All right, the next ship of the day is going to be the PHF-3 Valkyrie, which, based on its points, looks like it's going to be a fairly small, highly mobile, and fairly offensive ship. Uh, I'm guessing maybe like a fighter, large fighter, or something like that. Uh, I, I try not to classify too much, but uh, that is what it appears to be. Uh, I think I did see something in on the dock about it, and again, I, I try not to actually look at this stuff, but I think I saw something about police ship, something like that, so I, I'm not entirely sure if that is the role, but I just want to go ahead and throw that out there before we spawn it in, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, so this is the PHF3 Valkyrie, and it was created by Nomad525. I uh, already got to say that I love the engine design in the back, did a really nice job with that. Um, a lot of people would actually, and uh, I'm not saying this is a bad thing a lot of people would do this where they did the ice layer right behind those uh, tetras right there but the issue with that is then because these are all uh technically taking up a whole grid space like a whole block grid space then it would actually block the light from behind so it was actually a really good idea to uh, leave that ice with one block of space between it so that way you could actually get all the lighting to uh, come through that gap otherwise it would not look nearly as impressive as it does also got to say that I love the little like downward vents that you got there. Kind of looks like it's supposed to be uh, in atmosphere and doing like vertical landings and stuff like that. Really neat design. I like the stripes on the side panels here, which pretty much look like they're just supposed to be shields. Uh, although you do blend in a little bit of standard armor in there too. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a police cruiser of some sort. Because uh, yeah, you got the lights up there on the top. Really sweet. I, I do like it. It's, uh, it's a unique form. Not many people try and do 45 slopes, 45 degree slopes on the front of their ship. Um, Cause like aerodynamically it doesn't make the most sense, but it's space. Like even even the fact that it isn't space, it could, it's still sci-fi. So it can be whatever you want it to be. 
I really do like it though, because like it, it does look beefy enough to definitely take down any uh, any pirates or uh, any other kind of not villains but like criminals that you might come across. Looks like it's got some missiles, cannons, and plenty of thrust. Again, uh, the the point system that showed when we spawned it in showed it as being highly mobile, so that uh, that is definitely not too surprising. Anyway, let's go ahead and go up here to the front and see if we can't get in. I think I saw a button that will probably let us do it. All right, so here's the mystery button. Let's see what it does, and it's a ramp. <laughs> okay, it's a ramp, and is this glass? No. Well, it's glass, it's not a door. Oh, wait, wait, hang on, no. Uh, oh, wait, what? Oh, never mind. So this is a totally different thing. I had thought that I had hit the button, but it was actually this ramp, so that works. This is a really nice design, just kind of slides forward. That explains why it's got that little... Okay, I got you. I was wondering why you did the like little jog here. No, that really works. I like that. All right, so then you hop in here, hop in the seat, and here we go. Here's all your stats. Smiling Bandit sighted. That's really cool. Use extreme caution. Do not engage without backup. Oh man, sounds dangerous. Ooh, nice. That's good touch, using it on both sides. Because you only technically need the one rail. But it looks so much cooler when you've got two rails here. And then you got a... Is it a turret dock? Why would you need... Mm, oh, probably just for the design. Yeah, really nice. I like that. Definitely. So that's to get out. There is this button, which does something. And this button, which also does something. Let's push it. Uh, okay, let's push these in another mode. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully undo whatever I just did. Oh, wait, hang on. Did that just... Oh, you have rotating shield panel thingies, although they might also be uh, engines. Where's your core at, man? Oh, there's another... Oh, that's an inner ship remote, okay. Uh, where is the core? See, the nice thing about the fact that you don't overheat when you get cored anymore is that you can put your core in the cockpit. So there's that. Oh, is it all the way down there? Oh man, what? Well, how am I supposed to get in there? Oh, it's behind the thing. So if you're sitting in the cockpit, or in the seat, I should say, you can't actually get into into the into the core. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, if you just had uh, like if you moved your camera up one, and then you'd be able to see right there, and you'd be able to get it. So I would definitely recommend trying to do that, because that way you can actually sit in your core. Oops, and. Uh, or sorry, sit in your seat and get in your core. I'm trying to do too many things at once here. Okay, so let's try and close this. Hopefully I don't squish my head. Eee! Okay, and then get in here. Power supply, it's sweet power supply, what? Okay, let's try this button here. See what it does. Oh, the lights, of course, of course, the lights. That's awesome, very nice. And then this button rotates this whole thingy. Woo, nice. Are there engines here, though? There are not, so this just serves as landing gear, it seems which works brilliantly based on what I'm seeing here for the height of everything. Really nice, I really do like that. It's a nice integration of rails into an otherwise uh, relatively small build. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oops, oh no, oh no, that was an accident. <laughs> oh no, there we go. All right, rotate that back around. Now let's test out this quote, highly mobile thing. All right, just the two cameras for that extra immersion. Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff in this thing. Uh, cockpit's landing gear, siren, radar jammer, scanner and overdrive. All right, here we go. Let's back up so I don't hit my camera. And yeah, this thing is in fact fairly mobile. It is honestly a little more sluggish than I thought it would be, but still pretty stinking good. Alright, get back in here, and we will test out our weapons on the targets. This is going to be kind of a short review for this one, but it's a fairly small ship, so it's okay. Anyway, one shot into the penetration target. And I'm betting it's probably just a default, so probably going to be 5 to 7-ish. Eh, actually, no, it's like 3, something like that, 3 or 4. 4, 4 blocks. Pretty small array, I'm betting. Alright, try the missile. Not bad. Not bad for a small little ship. 
All right, and then, ooh, a jump inhibitor, nice. F somebody's finally using those. I mean, I know there have been a number of people using those. I just haven't seen any yet other than just decorative builds. Uh, radar jammer, yeah, okay. So pretty much that's just the main weapons. It's just the cannon and the missile. Let's see how it does against 200,000 shields. All right, so it is not a rapid fire cannon, just a normal base, which is good because the rapid fire really takes a lot of the damage out of it. Uh, going pretty slow at this, so let's try the missile. Yeah, that helped some, but yeah, not going to be doing a whole lot of damage to uh, large amounts of shields, but if you're just trying to take down other small, similar-sized fighters, it should do okay, especially with a missile, rather quick missile too that you've got here. All right, so this has been the PHF-3 Valkyrie, which is created by Nomad525. Really nice build. <laughs> Love the little lights spinning up on top. Really cool stuff. Let me see if I can get a slightly more cinematic shot here. All right, so thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I will be doing these weekly now. I realize that I've been on for a long time, and like I said, I don't want to get into um, all of what's been going on. I'll do a separate video for that. But uh, yeah, glad to be back and doing these. So if you guys have any ships that you would like to see reviewed, uh, keep in mind that I do not review everything that's sent to me. If if it turns out to be pretty good, then I will almost always put it in a in a review. Um, but make sure that it is on the StarMate dock and publicly available. Uh, also, preferably finished. I know a lot of people want to send me work in, work in progresses, and I do love looking at those. But I won't. I usually try not to put uh, whips or work in progresses into uh, episodes. So I will always look at them uh, and I try to give feedback, but I can't always put them in a in an episode. So anyway, thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.